welcome. In the last class, we saw a quantity called the partial molar property. We said that it is a conceptual quantity which we had defined, so that we could estimate the total property as just a weighted sum uh, made with the mole fractions of this conceptual property. Now, in this class, let us look at one of the ways of estimating partial molar properties from experimental data. The data that we need is from mixing experiments, you know you mix 1 and 2 and 3 whatever and then you initially measure the property of the pure component and then you measure the property of the mixture uh, very carefully of course. And this is the kind of data that we need to estimate the partial molar properties. The typical variables that are measured are volume and enthalpy, but the method is applicable to any extensive property. And since volume has an intuitive feel to it, we know that volume means something, it is the amount of space that it occupies. We will use that to demonstrate the partial molar property. Uh, enthalpy might be a little more difficult to imagine and therefore, we will use volume and then you can kind of extrapolate that to all other extensive properties. Usually there is a change in volume when uh, mixing of two components occurs and that is the reason why we are doing this. We will limit ourselves to a binary system. The final volume of the mixture is going to be different from the sum of the volumes of the pure components before mixing. And uh, let us say that in this binary system V 1 and V 2 are the molar volumes of the two pure components 1 and 2. And let us say that V 1 T hat hash and V 2 T hash be the partial molar properties in a solution containing n 1 moles of component 1 and n 2 moles of component 2. The difference in volume upon mixing is quite uh, easy to see. Let us represent that as delta of V t, the total difference in volume upon mixing. This is the volume after mixing minus the volume before mixing. The volume after mixing we said can be obtained by the uh, weighted sum of the individual volumes and that is why we brought in the partial molar quantities. Therefore, the volume uh, after mixing is n 1 v 1 t hash plus n 2 v 2 t hash minus the volume before mixing is for each pure component n 1 moles of the pure component 1 therefore, n 1 times the molar volume of uh, 1 v 1 gives you the volume of 1 and n 2 times v 2 gives you the molar volume of the second component. Therefore, this minus this is quite obviously the difference in volume upon mixing. If we recombine the terms by taking n 1 common out n 1 into v 1 t hash minus v 1 as here plus n 2 into v 2 t hatch minus v 2. We will call this equation 4 19. If we divide equation 4 19 throughout by n 1 plus n 2, the volume change per mole of the solution can be written down and therefore, delta v of t becomes just delta v, this is the molar volume of change. This is nothing but you know, n 1 by n 1 plus n 2 becomes x 1, since it is a binary solution x 1 plus x 2 will be 1 and therefore, x 1 can be written as 1 minus x 2. Therefore, 1 minus x 2 
into v 1 t hash minus v 1 plus x 2 times you know n 2 by n 1 plus n 2 is x 2 x 2 times v 2 t hash minus v 2. Let us call this equation 420. x 2 of course, was the mole fraction of component 2 in the binary solution that is quite clear. If we plot the experimental data on volume changes from mixing experiments as a function of x 2, you know the volume change in the y axis and the mole fraction on the x axis, we will get a curve something like this. You know this is delta v the, vol the molar volume change upon mixing as a function of the mole fraction of the component 2 varies between 0 and 1, we get a curve a g b. This is the variation in the volume upon mixing. Take a look at this figure c g d is the slope of this curve a g b at the point g, it is quite evident here and also these are distances which I have indicated by dotted lines g f, f e, c f, c a and so on. What I would like you to do is juggle your brains around a little bit and uh, try to figure out how we can use this figure to get at the partial molar property let us say v 1 hash or uh, yeah v 1 hash. Uh, why do not you think about it do it take about 15 to 20 minutes to do it there is there is no hurry, but this is the basis here I would like you to think about it. Uh, it comes from the definition of the slope you know which is essentially the slope uh, the uh, uh, derivative here derivative at this point and then relating it to the distances here. So, take about 15 to 20 minutes to come up with that and then I will give you solution step by step. Okay. Let me start working this out for you and give you some hints and help you get to the solution. As we had seen this is nothing but delta v versus x 2, this is the curve a g b that we will get the variation in molar volume change upon mixing as a function of x 2. The slope of the curve a g b at a particular point e on the x axis, you know, this particular point e at this point what would be the slope here is nothing but the derivative. You know, if you differentiate equation 418, here, let us not go too far behind, it is quite easy to see this. You have a curve, you have delta v as a function of x 2, which you got from here itself, you can start with this itself for 20 itself. And if you differentiate that, assuming constancy of pressure and temperature, If you use equation uh, 420 differentiated by the chain rule, do delta v do x 2 at the point e, you know, here somewhere here, we are doing this differentiation at the point e and we are doing the differentiation of this equation. So, do delta v do x 2 at the point e, okay. please keep this in mind when you are differentiating it. is nothing but 1 minus x 2 again by chain rule 1 minus x 2 dou v 1 t 
hash do x 2 minus v 1 t hash minus v 1 you know, taking 1 minus x 2 into this the first function into the derivative of the second function which is which will turn out to be d 1 t hash d x 2 minus the second function to derivative of the first function d, d do x 2 do x 2 will turn out to be 1. Therefore, that is the first term plus the second term is x 2 do v 2 uh, t hash do x 2 plus v 2 t hash minus v 2 both taken at the point E. And since x 1 equals 1 minus x 2 in a binary system, we have already seen from equation 1 8 sum over x i d m i t hash equals 0. And therefore, what do you get? Okay. Uh, this using this what can you uh, how can you simplify whatever derivative that we had written previously here. This is the derivative we have here and this is the hint that I am giving you for the next step summation of x i d m i t hash equals 0. So, how can you simplify the previous equation go ahead take the next 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes if you want and do it go ahead. Okay, if we apply this summation of x i d m i t equals 0, what is this? This is nothing but x 1 in, in our current binary case x 1 d m 1 t hash plus x 2 d m 2 t hash equals 0 or 1 minus x 2 x 1 can be replaced as 1 minus x 2. 1 minus x 2 d 1 t hash uh, sorry do d 1 t hash do x 2 plus x 2 do v 2 t hash do x 2 this equals 0. And where does this happen? It happens in the previous equation here you know this the combination of this and this can be set to 0 and therefore, do do x 2 of delta v at e just happens to be these two terms there is a minus here. So, let us write this first v 2 t minus v 2 uh, v 2 t hash minus v 2 set at e minus of v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e and that is what this one says. Therefore, do do x 2 of delta v at e equals okay, we have taken the minus here first does not matter minus of v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e plus v 2 t hash minus v 2 at e it's okay. equation 422. Now, can you take another 5 minutes to see how you can interpret these in terms of the distances given in the figure you know the figure 4.1 that I had shown the a g b curve delta v versus x 2 uh, see how these quantities can be related to the distances given in the figure take another 5 minutes this is a geometric interpretation of that and that gives us the basis for estimating the partial molar properties. you would have probably figured out what these mean in terms of the distances. Now, let me tell you what it is just check whether you got it right. Before we do that let us eliminate to do, to do that we to, the, to do that effectively let us eliminate v 2 t bar minus v 2 at point E between equations 420 and 422. What is 420? This 422 is this you know we have a v 2 t bar minus v 2 at e and 420 was this x 2 into v 2 t bar minus v 2 this one exists here. Therefore, let us use these expressions to write 
uh, v 2 t bar minus v 2 in terms of the other variables here. If we do that, we will get do please do this and check delta v e equals 1 minus x 2 at e into v 1 t bar minus v 1 uh, at the point e v 1 t hash minus v 1 at the point e plus x 2 at the point e into v 2 t hash minus v 2 at the point e. Therefore, v 2 t hash minus v 2 at the point e which we are trying to eliminate we had used the equation 420 to eliminate this. We could write this in terms of the other uh, variables by transposing delta v e minus take this to the other side 1 minus x 2 at e v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e and there is an x 2 uh, in a factor here therefore, divided by x 2 e. And from equation 422 at the point e now the equation 422 was this this and this by this by transposing we can write this in terms of the derivative and this particular quantity. v 2 t hash minus v 2 at e equals do do x 2 of delta v at e plus v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e. And since the left hand sides are equal between the previous equation and this equation we can equate the right hand sides and therefore, do of do do x 2 of delta v at e plus v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e equals the right hand side uh, on the previous equation delta v e minus 1 minus x 2 e into v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e divided by x 2 e. And therefore, if we transpose this equation you know, cross multiply and you, you know how to do this you can cross multiply and uh, get essentially we are looking at getting some way of finding out v 1 t hash. So, if you do the algebra you would get this as the first step multiply cross multiply by x 2 e x 2 e into do do x 2 of delta v at e plus x 2 uh, e into v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e equals delta v e minus 1 minus x 2 at e v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e and transposition getting v 1 t hash minus v 1 terms together we could uh, uh, group them as v 1 t hash minus v 1 at e common take out times x 2 e plus 1 minus x 2 e equals delta v e minus of x 2 into do do x 2 of delta v at the point e. Therefore, v 1 t minus v 1 at the point e equals delta v e minus x 2 e into do do x 2 of delta v at uh, the point e. And what does this represent on the graph was the earlier question and this rep what does this represent and what does this represent. You know the derivative is the slope of the line or the tangent of the angle uh, made at a particular point in this graph. Now, we are trying to get delta v e what is delta v e delta the value of delta v at the point e which happens to be the distance g e therefore, this can be replaced by this distance g e x 2 e is nothing but a e or c f you know this distance and dou delta v dou x 2 at the point e is nothing but the slope of the tangent that is the definition of the derivative itself from your calculus class which is nothing but the tan of the angle that this line makes with the horizontal line here what is tan opposite side by adjacent side g f by c f and therefore, e g e g minus a e x 2 times g f by c f that is what this is. This is the geometrical interpretation of this particular quantity, which can of course, be written as e g minus g 
f y because a e and c f are the same quantities. Therefore, you can cancel a e and c f here. Therefore, e g minus g f which is nothing but a c which is nothing but the intercept of the tangent made at the point g on the y axis. Therefore, the intercept of the slope with the x 2 equals 0 line which is the y axis gives us v 1 t minus v 1 at the point E. V 1 of course, is the molar volume of the pure component that is easily known and once you know the intercept you could get v 1 t hash. So, what is given here from the intercept value and v 1 the partial molar volume v uh, 1 t hash can be estimated. Now, a similar geometric interpretation gives v 2 t hash minus v 2 e equals the other intercept. What I would like you to do is to convince yourself that it is indeed the other intercept, convince yourself by going through the same procedure again. I would like to leave that as homework for you. And when we begin the next class, we will take things further. See you in the next class.